Yes, these should be quite nice. Just to give them a general idea of what to look for when it comes to art and what their tastes might be. I'm not sure on Michelangelo, though. We could discuss that. Hello! It is absolutely lovely to see you again. How have you been? Good. Glad to hear it. Well, as you can see, I've been very busy since our last appointment, getting prepared to show you quite a few different options for your home decor. These pieces, well, um, while I can find them for you for your home, these are really just examples to get a better idea of your sense of taste and style and preference, okay? If there is a piece you absolutely fall in love with, though, feel free to let me know and I can get the details on that for you. Okay. Wonderful. Well, would you like anything before we begin? Coffee? Tea? Sparkling water? You're okay? Alright, well, if you change your mind on that, just let me know. On today's agenda, like I mentioned, we'll be going over a few different pieces here just to kind of get a general sense of your preferences and tastes. That way I can curate your, um, we'll call it a style lookbook at the end of the process. That way we can help you figure out your ideal home decor situation. We'll also go over some beautiful, beautiful art books here, just to get an idea of what your art preferences are, because here at uh, this location we are of the opinion that a home without art is a home without life. Alright. Okay. Lovely. Well, do you have any questions before we begin? Yes, I will absolutely send out the details from today, just like I sent you the details from the textile and color appointment. Wonderful, wonderful. Alright. Well, I think that just about does it. You ready to get started? Good. Okay. I think... Hmm... To begin with, why don't we go ahead and go over... The art books, yes. I think that will get us a good, a good starting point, yes. Okay, lovely. So, in front of me I have a Monet, a Raphael, and a Michelangelo. Now, while I do absolutely adore Michelangelo's work, I think for the purposes of today's appointment we might skip this one. Just because both Michelangelo and Raphael are high renaissance artists, we really only need one to give you a general sense of the style, and I don't think you're in the market to get your ceilings painted. You could prove me wrong, of course, but that's what I thought. It also just feels wrong, in a way, to go over Michelangelo's work and not have a decent amount of focus on his sculpture work, because his sculpture work is absolutely divine. And just like the ceiling paintings, I don't, um, I don't think you're in the market for a very large uh, middle of the house piece. You know, seven to nine foot tall situation. Again, though, you could prove me wrong. You could want me to raise your ceilings and, um, construct a new foyer. You'll skip the new foyer this time. That's what I thought. Let me set 
Our lovely Michelangelo assigned them. Okay. Alright. It's Michelangelo assigned. Do you have any idea of what art you typically prefer? Whether it be something like going to an art museum or just pieces you've seen in loved ones' homes. If not, that's totally okay. That's why I have these examples here. No worries at all. Let's go over... Based on the colors that you were leaning towards last time, let's go over the Monet. So, I'm not sure how familiar you are with Claude Monet's work, but it is Impressionalist. It is very traditionally soft lines, beautiful color. It gives you more of a feeling for a person, a place, a locale, than it is meant to convey the true thing. The colors tend to be lighter in nature than that that you'll see in Raphael's book. Let me see if I can find us a good. different ones that I know I want to show you. Oh, the water lily pond. I've had the good fortune to see that in person and it is absolutely stunning. So Monet is known for working a lot in landscapes. The pieces that you see from him traditionally are the when you think of Monet, you traditionally think water uh, and flowers, gardens, that sort of thing. But it's not all he did. Let's see. I'm looking for kind of a full page situation here. I know the Raphael book has, I'm not sure about the Monet book. Well, it is beautiful. I don't think we need to look at Camille Monet on her deathbed. No, not today. Let's see. Those are lovely. Here we are. how well you can see this, but kind of hold it up here for us. There we are. So as, as you can see here, this is very traditional for a Monet piece with its lighter pastels, its soft greens and blues, the very soft kind of fluffy style of lines and painting. When you look at this piece, is there anything in particular that stands out to you? That's fascinating. I don't think that's something that most would have normally taken away on the first look. You have quite the eye for this. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see if I can find one more. to get, again like I said, a large, that one is much darker, not kind of what I'm going for here with the examples today. Hmm. I was hoping
maybe bigger ones in here. Let's go back to the back here. I suppose we can use the photo on the front as an example with the lily pads and this beautiful sunset work down here. see, especially on the bottom here. Mm -hmm. Yes, Monet is very well known for his work with light. For these colors, is there anything in specifics that you like or dislike regarding the looks here? Okay, I can certainly take that into account as we go through some decor. I know I've only shown you a few, but this has already been extremely helpful for me. Yeah. Okay, why don't we take a peek at the Raphael? If you would like to, you're more than welcome to peruse this book later. Somewhat of the polar opposite here. The book on Raphael, like I mentioned previously, Raphael was a high renaissance artist, so this is characterized as the very classic sense of art that you when you think of, of the, the very classic portrait styles, this is typically what comes to mind without you realizing it. Um, High Renaissance art was focused on not over-exaggerating the beauty in a subject, but instead of allowing various subjects to be shown together in harmony and to really give the larger piece overall, a sense of life and realism, characterized by, I mentioned, much more realistic than the Impressionist uh, Monet, which goes right in the name. But Raphael was known distinctly for having his own unique way of painting portraits, and uh, and not allowing himself to be changed by the other great artists of his time. Okay. It's very beautiful, but I know there are bigger ones here. This is what I was thinking. So, while the colors are somewhat darker in nature, there's still, there's still quite a few bright colors, there's vibrancy, there's light. See, like I mentioned, one of the main characteristics of the High Renaissance period was this ability to use an entire piece like this, just a huge area with all different manner of subjects without having one stand out, and instead allowing piece to speak for itself. Yes, so very different from Monet with the colors and the lines. Is there anything in particular about this piece that stands out to you? 
Mm-hmm. Really? Well, that is... That's an absolutely wonderful thing to take away from it. Again, quite impressed with your eye to detail. Okay. Let me see if I can find one more here, and then we'll move on from these. Okay. Alright. Oh yes, these books are divine. Oh, this one's good, too. Again, another two-page piece here. Same thing. The entire thing is telling a story. Instead of just having one. Not sure he did do a lot of portraits as well, but I think these. These absolutely are stunning. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you like the... I could absolutely see that for you, yes. Okay, wonderful. Well, that gives me... a very good starting point for this today. Yes. So we'll set these aside. I will get us a fresh page. My previous notes are from our last appointment. I'm just putting some notes down here on what we discussed today. I have several clients throughout the day, so I always like to be sure. Open the noggin, which was discussed with whom. You know how it is these days. Just everything is busy, busy, busy. It is quite easy to forget. Nothing personal at all, no. So, from there. I really want to focus today on mediums of decor, if you'll allow me to. Um, a little bit of texture work here and there, but really mediums and materials. To get a kind of a general sense of the sensations and the feelings that you want to fill your space with, okay? Wonderful. Now that I've said that, of course, we're going to go over two things that have nothing to do with texture. <laughs> so, something that is very important in home decor is a study in height and width and how you fill a space. So as we come throughout your house and figure out what to put where, it is very important to get pieces of this nature where you have quite a bit of height to it to fill a gap, to pair with something softer and shorter like this or like this a stack of books, a family portrait, whatever have you the height difference 
and the um, the width difference. They really add a piece of intrigue, and there's something that is very, very subtly pleasing to the eye when you mix different heights and widths and contrast them in such a manner. A lot of times people don't realize that when they can't quite figure out how to decorate their own home or something's just missing, that's the piece. It is properly mixing and matching those different shapes and sizes. All of that is to say, you will be incorporating various pieces like this into your house. So I wanted to see if you had a preference on the light or the dark candlestick. Fascinating. Okay. Well, I will be sure to incorporate that one then. This one's a little flimsy. He firms right up the, uh, the second you burn him for a little bit, you get some of the wax down in there, but I like to have new candles on display for this part. But if you look up there, I do have a candelabra that has these beautiful black tapered candles. Alright. You can also mix and match if you prefer that. I do a little bit of mixing and matching of the candles in my own home, but some do prefer that everything be the same, the same color there. Alright, so, with that, comes to your personal decor style. For this exercise, I would like for you to try to focus more on the style, the lines, the silhouette of the pieces, than the pieces themselves. I know that can be a little hard, so bear, I'll bear with you and you bear with me. Um, we're going to compare these two here. Now for something like this, we're looking at a very harsh, very sleek and simplistic lines. Something like this might lend itself more towards kind of an executive style of decor. Like I said, very crisp lines on all of the edges here. Mm -hmm. Or we could go with more of a sort of rounded and gentle style that is more focused on the curve gentle slopes, um, brings a little bit more whimsy and softness. You are always welcome to mix and match throughout the home. In fact, we encourage it. But as far as those go, do you know if you have a preference on which one you typically would like to use? Or can you think of any pieces in your home that are represented by one style or the other. All right. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Okay. Wonderful. With that in mind, let's look at... Let's look at 
the material of these now. Once again, for these two, here we have a nice wooden and natural material. Now this one is less natural than some. It has been sanded, polished, stained. Let's see. Something like this piece, perhaps. It's a little more natural. Still sanded, polished, and stained, but more of a natural stain than this cherry. But for now, I'll just focus on the the wood itself, all right. So something like that. Or we have ceramic pieces that are somewhat less natural just in the sense that they are man-made, but still bring, still bring their own unique texture. Mm-hmm. Certainly. I find that wood can be very warming if you like to use kind of gold, um, warm hues in your house, whereas ceramics can be more lent towards cooling. So for light blues and greens, you can always mix and match these, of course, of course, always. But right, if you're going for a specific, um, a specific feeling of warmth or coolness, like if you wanted kind of a cool ocean feel to your house, I would recommend something like the ceramic here, as it lends itself towards the coolness, the crispness of the waters. Whereas something like this, we would more traditionally think, ironically enough, fire, um, or just the warmth of the sunlight in the woods. Okay, lovely. Yes, we put a lot of emphasis on the way the pieces can make a space feel over just the way they look. Because a lot of times when you walk into a house, you don't, unless it's a very large piece, you don't typically have one piece that sticks out to you more than anything. You get a general feeling from the home itself, the people within it, how they've decorated the vibe of the place. And a lot of that has to do with textures and lines and colors. Yes, that's why we're putting such an emphasis on this. So we want to make sure that when you walk into your home, it has the feeling that you desire from your home, not just the look. Right. So, let's do... You know, a piece like this, I'm not going to pick this one up and move it. Something like this adds a lot of height, obviously. But you can see here how we've played off of the curved lines by adding straight stalks that flew out and balance the whole piece while still it tapers into the center here bringing a point of interest mm -hmm. and of course using this line here of the vase itself and pulling it into the color scheme up here that way the, the floral piece that's been added doesn't feel foreign to the vase. It feels like an extension of it, an elongation of it. So that's why it's important to focus not only on the textures, but also the colors for visual appeal. But there is 
even though these are two pieces, there is a uniformity to it, regardless of the fact it's two different textures. It's little details like that that we can use to make something flow very naturally, or to make something, I mean, break off quite abruptly visually for you. Some people do prefer a more scattered, more broken up feeling, um, if you're going for kind of a a modernist, surrealist look in your home, we would recommend something like that. But if you're going for more of a, I don't know, we'll call it a southwestern um, kind of vibe, things of this nature where it flows, reminds you of nature regardless of the man-made aspects, constantly the stone, the wood, send you back into this mindset of natural things. Right, so that's kind of the idea that we're trying to keep in mind here, and that's why I'll be asking you so many different kinds of questions, like, do you prefer the wood or ceramic? Something like this, um, or something a little more stout like this one over here. And different spaces will require different things, so Mm -hmm. But, all of that said, we have a piece like this, where it's a ceramic, with a more natural addition to it. We also have a piece like this, which you could easily add to, but it's a terracotta pot or vase, whichever one you want. But you still get, you still get that vertical height with, there's something more warming and natural about terracotta, I find. Mm -hmm. Or, a piece like this. Or again, ceramic. But with the little spots flickle throughout to pull in both a different look texturally and visually for the color purposes. Mm -hmm. I do have a preference on the vases. Again, you could absolutely do both of them. Well, I wouldn't recommend having these too close to each other. Right. Okay, of course. That gives me a very good idea for some pieces we could use in your home. Is this helping so far, or is this just confusing you? Good. Good, I'm glad it's helping. Terracotta. say minimalist, how does that make you feel? Most people have a very strong emotional reaction to that one. Mm -hmm. I myself went through a minimalist stage once upon a time. I feel like you either become one and absolutely gung-ho die as one, or you completely 180 and begin to think that that style of living is very cold and harsh. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am no longer in my minimalist era. Moving on. So, 
another thing we want to look at as we are discussing textures. So both of these pieces, quite similar in height, both of them being glass, obviously much different with what's inside of them, but the portion I want to focus on is the cork. Now, most people don't think of this kind of texture very often, but I find that cork is an absolutely fascinating texture to include in the home. It adds a sort of a roughness without too much harshness. It's still soft, and yet it adds that bit of visual texture that we require at times. So, a simple glass bottle with a cork top, a simple candle with a cork top, that kind of thing. Is this something that would interest you to have in your own house? Or would you prefer something more like this, where it's all kind of open concept glass? Both have their time and place, certainly, but some do genuinely prefer the streamlined nature of a glass piece like this, whereas some prefer having a bit of, a bit of textural roughness or interest there. So a good mixture of the two, you think? Good, good, good. Alright. Another fun trick we can use, depending on uh, which color scheme we go with in the end, is something quite like this candle, where it's a very small piece, but because it is so small, you can set this atop a shelf very easily, and let it just be a pop of color, a little piece of interest, without it being entirely overwhelming to the eye. But it ensures that your house still pulls those colors through each room, and they all work and flow together, instead of it just becoming a neutral gravesite. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Lovely. How do we feel about shells? Indeed. Some people are very into, very into a shell theme. Others think it tacky. Others like them scattered around occasionally as, you know, a piece of nature brought inside. Again, a very emotionally dividing piece. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I'm not quite sure where the whole mindset of shells belong in the bathroom came from. I'm sure it has something to do with the water in the bathroom, reminding people of the water of the ocean, wanting their bathroom to feel like an ocean breeze spa. But I digress. It's, it's a funny thing. It's kind of like the farmhouse kitchen theme that we had for, for quite a few years. <sighs> Never again. Alright, let's see. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can get this down without dropping it on the shall we?
we have this absolutely stunning piece here. This candelabra. Gorgeous. I think everyone can agree on that, no matter what style preference you have. That's something like this, where it's very kind of antique or classic, very sophisticated, a little full of itself almost. Or I'll go with you for now. Something like this. That's definitely definitely willing to laugh at itself. Both bring a metallic element into the home. One a little more muted in color, but a much different feeling, a different era almost. One a brighter pop of color, But much more modern and streamlined. Do you have... First we'll focus on metallic type. Do you like the kind of shinier, more illuminated pop? Or do you like the more muted style here? Mm -hmm. Okay, of course. And of course, if gold is not your preference, that's totally fine. We can work with silvers, opalescent colors, gemstone colors, any kind of thing you can imagine. For the metallics, though, traditionally gold and silver. Yes. So now we've discussed the finish of it. Do you have a preference over a more modern piece like this? Or a more antique style piece like this? Uh -huh. Okay, certainly. Yes, well you could certainly, certainly have these in the same home. I don't think I'd recommend having them in the same space. I think these would need to be in two, two separate rooms. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Let's try to get these back without dropping them. I just love the little feet on this. Quite impressed with myself that I didn't drop a single candlestick on my head. No. One final thing that I think would be good to discuss. Oh, ooh, before, sorry, not one final thing. Books. How do you feel about books? Okay. Some people feel like they should be for decoration only. Some people feel like they should be for reading enjoyment only. It's really a kind of a utilitarian versus a romantic kind of mindset when it comes to books. Personally, I'm of the preference that they can be both. It's a both and. I think books are one of the prettiest things you can decorate with. That's just me though. Don't let me sway your opinion. So I would certainly, if you're interested, want to look at doing some bookshelf styling for you. That can 
my goodness, that can really brighten a room up. And it's quite an art form that not a lot of people do well, unfortunately. Um, but that is for the in-person consultation. So, books. Now, on to my final question for you today. Bear with me. Try not to drop it. So. This is a question of nature versus what's the opposite of nature in decorating. It's been a very long day. I've only had one cup of coffee so far and I've had three consultations. Um, man-made. We'll go with that for now. So, natural textures. Please ignore the fact these are plastic. We're going to pretend like they're real vines for now. Natural textures like these to be incorporated throughout the home where they're almost a little messy and predictable. But still, bring the outdoors in, you know. We could achieve this by doing something like this, where it's fake vines in a basket, or by having you know, plants throughout the home, potted trees, that kind of thing, just to provide some visual interest. There's also the benefit of air purification if they're real plants, that's always nice. Psychologically speaking, there's a lot of great benefit you can have from bringing plants your house, but for now, we're just trying to focus on the look, the feeling of it. Mm -hmm. So, something like this. It's a little more chaotic. Or something Easier on the eyes, perhaps. Much smoother in texture. A bit more simple. But a fascinating piece that would definitely be the center of a conversation if it's a light object in the background. But it is notable. The comparison here is man-made versus nature. So something like this where the... It's obvious that it was made and not found in nature. Some people really prefer this and the cleanliness of it. The interest of the piece itself. And some people really prefer this. Just kind of getting your input there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lovely. Let's put these back.
as we discussed, art styles, candlestick color, straight versus curved lines. For the vases, discuss terracotta, ceramic, minimalism, shells, shiny and metal, antique versus modern, or the notion with the different with books, and nature versus man made products. I think this gives me an absolutely wonderful place to start with. Especially when pairing it with the textures and the colors from the last appointment that we had. Yes, the last appointment that we had was quite, quite telling of your style already. So I think that with everything here, I'm going to be able to create a wonderful lookbook for you. As I mentioned last time, I'll create a few different options send them your way, and then we can mix and match to your heart's content if you like certain aspects of one or the other. And then once we have that, I will start actually sending you some pieces that we could purchase to bring into your house. I'll do the house tour, I'll come through and kind of give you some ideas for the space itself, so on, so on. Lovely. Well, I'm very excited about this. I think it's going to... I think you're really gonna like how it turns out. Mm -hmm. Alright. Well, I'm going to get started on this straight away. Um, if you would like to sit for a bit, have a cup of tea out in the foyer, that's totally fine. Or if you have other appointments to get to, totally understand. You should be hearing from me within the next few days, all right? Okay. Well, just like last time, it was an absolute pleasure to have you today, and I'm really looking forward to helping you design your home. Okay. I'll see you next time, all right? <laughs>